Good evening. My name is Stephen Marsh. Welcome to the Cambridge Wines Royston Pinkster Gin Tasting. Thank you very much uh, for, for joining us. Um, you should have each received one of these um, and I'm going to talk you through the sort of contents and give you an idea of, of, of what I think you're going to need for, for, for this evening. So first of all what we're going to do is we're going to start with the, the clear liquid which is the um, our triple juniper. This is what we make first. Uh, that's sort of naked pinkster, if you like, pinkster in the buff. We're then going to move on to uh, pinkster gin itself. And then when we've finished making pinkster, we're left with the raspberries um, and we do things with them. And I'll tell you more about that later. But one of the things we do um, is we make, turn, turn them into jam. When we turn them into jam, we're then left with the liquid they've been preserved in. Um, which is a combination of, uh, of gin and raspberry juice. And that we now bottle and sell as Pinkster Royale. So we're going to be tasting that. Um, then we're going to move on to a, a cocktail, uh, one of my favourites, uh, a, a Pinkster Gimlet. Um, and I'll show you how to make that um, and how to, how to drink it. Absolutely delicious. And then we're going, you know, we've started at the very dry end. We're going to end up with something much sweeter, which is a, uh, a fruit gin liqueur. This is Wild Bullets and Quince. Uh, which we produce under the, under our hedge pig brand. Now you should also we're going to try that with ginger ale, which you would have received. We're going to try um, the uh, pinkster in the buff, uh, triple juniper, and the uh, and pinkster with the uh, with the ordinary with the Indian tonic. You would have also uh, had a, a jar of our jam, and I think you'll have had some of our gin jam sachets, and I'll explain about them them later. Now the glassware you're going to need. Um, first of all, you're going to need some shot glasses. Don't worry if you haven't got shot glasses. Larger glasses will, 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 will do. I just haven't had shot glasses. Um, uh, I think you're going to need uh, some, some, some ice. So do have lots of ice, ice uh, ready. Um, and then I think you're going to need a, a wine glass. Um, and I'll explain, explain what we're going to do with that. Um, and, and a larger glass too. Um, uh, I certainly intend to have a drink whilst we're doing this. Um, so, uh, and also, if you have any mint. Now, you may not may not have any. If you've got any in the garden, don't worry if you haven't got any mint. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do the mint trick. So if you've got some mint, uh, please have that too. So, we'll crack on. Right, before we start start tasting, I thought I'd give you a little bit of background about uh, Pinkster Gin, uh, about how I started to make it and why I started to make it, uh, because this really is a hobby that has grown wildly out of control. Uh, about sort of 16 years ago, I, I, uh, I had uh, some health issues, um, uh, and you go to your doctor and say you've got a drinking problem in that you can't, they tend not to take it quite as seriously as you think they should. Um, the fifth doctor I saw identified the problem. I had a, had a problem with yeast and sugar. My body wasn't processing yeast and sugar. Yeast and sugar were hanging around in my stomach and doing what yeast and sugar do when they hang around together um, and, uh, and not making me feel terribly well. Um, and although at that stage I probably hadn't had a drink in 18 months, uh, he told me that if, I, if he breathalyzed me there and then, I would probably fail the breathalyzer. Um, I've since seen several several cases reported in the papers where uh, long-term teetotalers um, have failed breathalyzers um, and uh, got off drink driving charges on, on, on medical medical grounds. Um, there's probably a lot of people wandering around with similar conditions um, without realizing it. So even better than I identifying it and diagnosing the issue, he said he could cure it. Unfortunately, the cure was very boring um, and uh, just involved uh, cutting yeast and sugar out of my diet. Now, cutting yeast and sugar out of your diet is much easier said than done. It, it effectively meant a very traditional British diet, meat and two veg, nothing interesting, nothing tasty, um, very, very bland. But it worked. Two years later, he said, right, we're going to start reintroducing things into your diet. And, uh, and I was very pleased when he said that uh, we could reintroduce some alcohol. Um, and prior to that, I'd been a, I'd been a wine drinker. And, um, uh, but he said you can drink gin or vodka. 
having had a bland diet, the last thing I wanted was a bland spirit. And I have to say, I think a vodka as a raw ingredient, it's a neutral grain spirit without the benefit, even the, without the benefits of, of juniper. So, um, but I thought gin was fantastic. I really, really liked gin. At that stage, I was drinking gin with uh, mineral water because I was still, still cutting out sugar. Um, I'm still to this day really careful about, about sugar because I really don't want it all to come back. Um, and uh, you know, that, I thought gin was lovely, but it doesn't go with food. The defining characteristic of, of gin is juniper. So vodka, definition of vodka is a pure grain spirit. The definition of gin is a pure grain spirit predominantly flavoured with juniper. Now juniper, I think, is an absolutely wonderful botanical, but it is very bitter. It doesn't necessarily go with food. So what I was trying to do, what I set out to do, was to find a gin that I could drink all evening. At the time, and it's funny to think, think of it now, there were only about 20 brands on the market and none of them actually could I drink with food. So I set out to make one myself. I thought, how hard can this be? Um, and uh, oh, the, the, the joys of ignorance. Um, uh, it took me about a year before I had a eureka moment and I discovered that raspberries did something really special with juniper. They just, just mellow it, they melt, they, they round the edges, they smooth it. And, um, and I then spent another three and a half years playing around with botanicals uh, to make a clean and refreshing drink that I could, a gin, that I could drink all evening. Uh, I had no intention of doing this commercially. This was purely for my own, own pleasure. Um, and I kept foisting this on everybody who came through the door. Um, and eventually um, I realised I got it right because I, was, uh, I hadn't changed the recipe in, a, in about three months. And uh, that's exactly the same recipe we use today. We still make it with fresh raspberries, but I'll tell you more about how we make it, etc. But that's that's why I started. I was really dragged kicking and screaming into the trade. I had no intention to do this commercially. I had um, a very busy job in London. I was spend I was commuting from Royston, um, and and I was spending all my time on the train to and fro, thinking about botanicals and and how it would work. And I was doing all of this in my kitchen. Um, at home purely for my, my own consumption. Um, I was eventually persuaded by some friends that I should do it commercially and I have to say seven years later um, I can honestly say it's the best thing I've ever done. I've had more fun in the last seven years than I had in the previous 25 but when I tell you that I was an accountant beforehand you'll realise that I was starting from a very low base on the fun stakes. So now on to the first um, the first uh, uh, of the gins we're going to taste this evening, which is our triple juniper. This is what we make first. Um, this is, uh, I make, and I call it triple juniper um, because we put three times as much juniper in as normal. Um, when I was experimenting all those years ago, I'm trying to get the, trying to get the balance between the raspberries and the juniper right um, uh, was, was really very, very difficult. Um, and, you know, because I wanted to be able to taste juniper, but in, I, I wanted to mellow the edges. Um, and I wanted to have some. I wanted. I wanted to have some some taste of the raspberries, but that had to be very subtle. When you're making a gin, generally what you're looking for is is subtlety of flavour. Uh, you don't want something that that's that's too too punchy, too in your face, um, because actually they've all got to work together. You want. To have, and I was look. I wanted something clean and refreshing that I could drink all evening. So, now what we're going to do. Um, is so if you take the, uh, the, the, the the triple juniper and and put a little bit uh, in the glass um, now don't knock it all back in one one go because actually what we're going to do is we're going to build up to a, to a to a mini gin and tonic with this so what I want you to do first of all is to is to sniff it now when you do that you should get quite a lot of juniper on the nose then then I want you to sip it. Push it around your mouth. You will get a lot of juniper because there is a lot of juniper in that. Um, and um, and yeah, and that's, that's entirely deliberate. Now, actually, we don't sell this. Um, we don't we don't sell this uh, on, on on its own. Um, uh, we make this uh, and then then uh, 
we then do a secondary maceration and make pinkster with it. So um, this, you'll, you'll be amongst the first people who have tasted this on its own. Um, so having done that, the next thing to do is to get some ice and put some, some ice in your glass. Now, it may sound um, uh, trite for me to say uh, that the, the, uh, there are two things that the ice does. Uh, the first is, obviously, that it reduces the temperature of the liquid. And that is important, but not nearly as important as the fact that actually it dilutes the gin. When you taste gin professionally, you taste it 50-50 water. I have to say that I much prefer to taste gin like this. I like to taste it, I like to taste it neat. I like to then add ice. I want the ice to melt a little and I will spare you the, uh, the science lesson, but something happens on a molecular basis, it opens up. So if you, if, you, know, you can let, if you put your, your hand around the glass, that should warm it up slightly. You want, you want it to melt a little bit. You want it to dilute the gin. So when it's done that, then have another sip. And it's not such a strong juniper hit this time. There are other flavours in there. Um, I'm not going to name them because actually um, I've never told anybody about the botanicals we use to make pinkster um, other than juniper and raspberries. There are eight botanicals in total. There are five botanicals uh, in triple juniper and um, I'm not going to tell you what, what, the, other, what the others are. Um, one of them is, is, is quite easy to taste. Uh, the, other, the other three are, are not. Um, I have to say, it makes a fantastic martini, but that is a very, very good uh, dry gin, traditional gin. Now, the next thing we're going to do um, is we're going to add some tonic water to it. So just a dash, don't drown it. You may need, of course, to, have, um, to, to top up your glass from, from, from the original, because um, you probably may well have drunk it by now. Um, anyway, then try it again. And it's a very, very dry gin and tonic. I do drink this at home. I think it's a really nice dry, dry gin. Uh, at home, I garnish it with a slice of orange. As I, as I said, um, we don't normally sell this, um, but um, we are, um, as a favour for, for, um, for, for Kirby and, and Cambridge wines, we are going to um, we are going to be selling this um, on the back of this tasting. Here is a here is a bottle, um, triple ju triple juniper. Um, it's a really really dry, strong, heavy juniper gin. Personally, I really like it. Um, we don't do it, um, we don't sell it normally, uh, because all that we make, we actually want to turn into pink stuff. Um, but this will be available uh, from, from Cambridge Wines uh, for, the for the next month. So, uh, moving on to the, the next one.